How you doing today? Hi, I'm good. How are you? All right. How was your trip? It was cool. It was cool. It was easy. Atlanta to D.C. is not a bad flight. Okay, so you're based out of D.C.? Yeah. All right, so um, tell us a little bit about, you know, because to me, you know, you're just being introduced to me, you know, and, and tell us a little bit about the show and how you came up. Sure. Um, so when I was in high school, uh, my family got sourced for a show. Uh, they liked us. We shot a pilot and we had three seasons on Bravo. Uh, the last season kind of left off with me at Howard. I was about a sophomore at the time. Uh, I graduated from Howard last year. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty much the little scoop with that whole deal. Okay. So, you know, what was your college experience like? Oh, it was awesome. I mean, Howard is probably one of the the, the top HBCU that there is. So, you know, my experience coming from a um, from a sheltered home and then going to Howard was definitely a lot of like uh, exposure and shock value and all that good stuff. But once you kind of get over the initial, you know, shock of everything and just you know realizing, oh, I'm on my own now, then you can kind of you know go through the, the motions a little easier. So, um, you know, with the election and all of the stuff coming up and being that you've already graduated. How do you feel about the situation with them talking about removing student loans for a lot of people? Uh, that would be awesome. I uh, I was blessed uh, to where my mom was actually able to take care of mine, so I didn't have to pull out any student loans. Um, but I think that that would be amazing for a lot of students that I know. A lot of people spend the rest of their lives paying off their student loans, so to take that debt away, I mean, that would be amazing. So what types of things did you learn about yourself when you were in college? Because when I went to college, it was it was it was a lot happening at once. You were, I was learning a lot about myself and being on my own for the first time. Uh, what type of things did you go through as a college? Yeah, student? I mean, I was green. I was as green as they come, you know, and never really experienced anything outside of my home in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. So, you know, I had to discover a lot of different things about myself, you know. What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? Uh, if I let myself go this far, then maybe that's not a good idea. Reel it back in. So I just kind of learned my limits and my boundaries. That's probably the best way to put it, just learning my limits and my boundaries. Because if you don't ever try anything, it's kind of hard to, to put a tab on that. So, you know, once I did start trying things, being on my own, I was able to kind of Okay, learn from my own mistakes and learn from other people's mistakes too. So, so what what made uh what made you choose HBCU over like MTSU or Austin P? I went to Austin P. Okay, wow. So okay, I grew so up like at Fort, yeah, yeah, Fort Campbell. I grew up in that area, so I actually went there. Okay, wow, yeah. So that was never really an option for me. Uh, my mom really encouraged me to go away. I honestly only uh, applied to two colleges. I applied to Western Kentucky and I applied to Howard. And I got into both, but once I got the acceptance from Howard I, and I had visited a couple times, I think I think I was just sold. Okay. So. So what got you into like life speaking, life coaching? Things like um, that? I think just kind of being on the show and having a platform and then, you know, being able to kind of share some of my intimate experiences, some of my, you know, intimate traumas and tragedies has, you know, just seeing the effect that it has had on, you know, the fan base or my supporters and just how, like, you know, they'll be like, wow, that really helped me or wow, like, I would have never expected you to be open or honest about that. And just kind of seeing that feedback and seeing like, wow, like, maybe I can really affect, you know, this generation or, you know, those who follow me positively, that's really the biggest the biggest thing for real. Now, you know, right now we're going through a, a, a surge of women empowerment. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I've noticed as women of all shades, all, you know, the whole nine, like from wealthy all the way down to the bottom, you guys also, you all, you all go through similar things. Right, you know? absolutely. Um, especially when it comes to trauma and things of that nature. You know, exactly. what's, what's your take on that? Exactly. No, I mean, there's such a wide spectrum of women, and yeah, that's true. There's certain things that we're all going to experience. So I think that us coming together and there just being more empowerment and more conferences and more speakers and things like that, 
Obviously, you're going to have to pick out the ones that maybe aren't for you. However, I think as a whole, the connection and the community that's coming together is amazing. It's one of the, you know, we don't really see this too much. And even in the confidence that we're able to have, even in, hey, like, I'm going to wear what I want to wear, like nasty woman, like all of that. I think that there's, it's awesome that we're coming together now. Like I said, there are some that you're going to have to weed out. There's, you know, some things about femininity that isn't always for black women, which is why I would probably side on the womanist side, just because there are certain things that are catered to certain shades more than others. Um, and so I'd say that, but as a whole, I am happy to see the unity. And what have you noticed about women who are, because you know, you traveled around, you know, you've done some things overseas and stuff like that. What kind of feedback are you getting from women who are not necessarily in America and overseas or is it the same? Yeah, um, I mean, and of course there are different issues in every country. So, you know, the issues in France are not the issues in America. The issues in Holland are not the same issues. So, you know, even down to simple things like healthcare or, you know, if I go over to Dubai, and or if I go over to, you know, Afghanistan, you know, women are being, you know, forced to cover up, you know, it's just different circumstances for different demographics. So, you know, but I think that we all ultimately want to be free and comfortable in our own skin. And, you know, this is a time in America where I feel like a lot of women are finally given the, the pass, if you will, or finally being validated to be in our own skin even if you look at you know people like lizzo or you know uh meg the stallion you know you've got a lot of women out here who are just unapologetic about what they're doing and, right. you know i think that's setting a, an interesting tone i mean it is and and you know people like especially when we're talking about the music business people like jermaine Dupri have just said that yes he thinks it's a little bit too much yes um you know i don't want to I know women, women do what they do, and it's kind of like, we try to, there always needs to be some balance. Right. Basically. And do, do you guys feel like there needs to be balance, or you feel like things are going the way? Uh, okay, I'll say this. Musically, uh, some of the newer artists, I, I, I don't really see the, the big talent about it, but I think it's more so the trend that, I would more so be a fan of. I'm more so a fan of, like I said, you know, them being unapologetic, them not caring what other people think. The music, you know, <laughs> it's okay. But I, I, what Jermaine Dupri said, what would have been better for him to do is to try and reach out and maybe develop some artists or maybe work with some artists because at the end of the day, and I saw a lot of, you know, feedback. People saying, like, who was even listening to Jermaine? Now, let's not disrespect Jermaine because Jermaine is a legend and he has, you know, he's put his foot down, he done paid his dues. But also, I think a, a, a responsibility that maybe the older generation or even those that are in power that are a little older is to, hey, if you see an issue or if you see something that you want to see change, come into the studio, come in and contact the, the people. They're not going to show you away, but when you speak, negatively on that you know what i'm saying especially when future and you know and thug and whoever else are putting out pretty much the same record five times in a row no one's saying nothing about that so keep that same energy i uh, see i've heard a lot of people say that but we complain about the guys too you know and okay the thing but is, i don't hear that as much as i hear y'all complain about the girls now y'all quick to complain about the girls the guys y'all be like Okay. I think it's because it's in general conversation. We normally, like, people complain about hip hop all the time. Yeah. They say, you know, everything sounds the same. That's yeah. always been a, you know, a, um, a conversation in the community. I just think that now, with there being an influx of women, yeah. it's louder because it's it doesn't happen, but so often. Y'all are not used to it. Right. They are shaking this industry up, and y'all are just not used to it because you're used to having your Drake, your future, your gonna your little baby the baby and then now but not and only nikki and only cardi but now you have asian doll now you have dream doll now you have cash doll now you have meg now you have uh just you know tiara Wack. you have so many different women that are coming out and y'all are y'all are not ready for it y'all are not used to it it's just it is well, what me, it is you know me personally you know i grew up on you know the bmx's and foxy's and all okay that yeah well you know so 
it's it's a lot different for me. You know, I'm not really into the newer stuff as yeah. much. But some of them, like Rhapsody, I like her a lot. Um, it's, it's just a few women out there. I actually like Doja Cat. You know, okay, right? yeah. So people like that, you <laughs> yeah. know, it's, it's, it just, you don't want too much of anything. Yeah, so and like, I guys. still like, I love R&B. So I love Summer Walker. Okay. Like, she's one of my favorites. And I like, you know, to kind of listen. I would have liked Sabrina Claudio if she wasn't, you know, doing all that. Right. Just calling black people names and things like that. But, um, but no, Summer Walker is great. Uh, and then, you know, I, I so just R&B as a whole, Frank Ocean, whatever. But that's, you know, I think at the end of the day, I think you got, I think the guys are just shocked that it's just, like you said, the influx of women. It's just not typical. All right. So tell us a little bit about Journey to Self. Right? Yeah. Um, so Journey to Self is an interactive journal just dropped July, beginning of July. Uh, and it is designed to help young girls kind of, you know, give them a guide and also not necessarily like give them answers to things, but to prompt them to maybe come up with their own answers. So prompt them to critically think, prompt you to, you know, OK, well, where am I on my journey? OK, well, how would I customize my own experience or OK, what am I doing every day to reach this goal or like what am I doing? You know what I'm saying? So I think it's really important to create, you know, self, uh, self, self reflect, self reflection, um, and just you know allowing people to kind of come to their own conclusions with a little bit of guidance. So that's basically what Journey to Self is. What have you noticed about because you know if you're talking ages 13 to 25? You know, are they receptive? You know, yeah. how how is the response? Are you know? Um, because a lot of times people don't want to listen to the older crowd. Right. And I guess it depends on how you deliver the message. Right. Once again, Jermaine Dupree and how yeah. he gave that message. So Absolutely. What is there any story that you've come across over the years that kind of stuck with you with, with some of these young kids? A story, you mean, in regards any, to... Yeah, any, any kid that you spoke to, that you've spoken with, um, is there anything that actually stood out uh, to you and hit you hard? Uh, I mean, uh, stories, I mean, yeah, I mean, I hear a lot of stories, you know, all the time. I mean, I guess, you know, things that just hit me hard is really when people say, thank you for sharing this or thank you for being so transparent because I went through X, Y, Z. And, you know, it was just nice to realize that I'm not alone in this. Or it's just nice to realize that, you know, I can get through this or there is somebody out there that's doing worse than me so maybe I can muster my cards together and win because you can so I think that I mean just the I know it's general but I think the general feedback just as a whole just, even outside of the journal is just thank you for sharing it's always thank you for sharing you know and then they'll tell me they, their story or whatever they're dealing with and, all right so I saw a clip of yours and you were basically there was an issue, I guess, I guess you had a health scare or something yeah. happened where, um, can you kind of elaborate on that for me? Yeah, sure. Um, so I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis uh, when I was younger, probably like in high school, middle school. Uh, ulcerative colitis is basically a disease of the intestines, which basically means that if I eat certain foods or, you know, get certain things in my body or even my stress levels get too high, I have a flare. A flare basically means that I'm extremely fatigued, extremely tired, losing 30 to 40 pounds, vomiting, and all of, all of it. It's just, it's not pretty. It's not fun and it's not pretty. Um, so, you know, essentially what I do to keep that in check is take a lot of probiotics. Uh, I like to do a lot of herbs, uh, sourcing for that, health drinks, living foods. Um, and, you know, I watch my diet very heavily. Um, so, you know, I was on medication. A lot of the medication had a lot of bad side effects, just wasn't agreeing well with my body. Um, so that's kind of how I went through the holistic route. And I kind of try and share that with my following. Like, y'all can go the holistic route. It is probably going to be better for you in the long run. And, excuse me, just letting my following know that honestly, a lot of issues and, you know, diseases can be handled with food because food is, is, is you, you should eat to live, not live to eat. So. All right, so break down the whole list of problems. Because I know, you know, people who have diabetes have worked that route. And yeah. they've, 
reversed it. Yeah. You know? So kind of explain that for those who aren't understanding. Sure. So the holistic route, it is something that you're going to have to research for yourself either way, especially because each case is so different. Uh, but the way I would start, and I wrote an article about this in Essence, the way I would start is with a blood test. And, you know, rather that's allergies or rather, you know, even in the in the springtime or summertime, if you have allergies, I would get a blood test. If you have whatever you have going on, get a blood test. That way that they can, um, you know, do the proper testing and figure out, okay, this substance or this food or this concoction is not good. Stop eating it. Stop being around it. Don't let it touch your skin. Whatever it is, you know, so that's kind of the, the beginning. Just pinpoint what it is that's irritating you. Pinpoint what it is that you need to switch up or change. Uh, from there, you know, I would start researching, okay, this root or this herb is really good for me. Let me start, you know, introducing this into my, you know, daily routine or whatever. See how your body reacts. You're not going to have the same kind of reaction that you would if you were taking a medication from the FDA. It's there, those kind of reactions just don't flow over into the holistic realm, which I love, which is why I'm a big fan of holistic healing. Also, a lot of the medications are made to literally be a bandage to one area, but you know that if you don't treat the scar that's under the bandage, it's going to fester or it's gonna cause issues somewhere else. So it's really important to attack head on the issue at hand. And then, you know, you can kind of adjust and apply different things to, you know, your, your routine or your regimen from there. All right. So when we're talking about, you know, life, relationships, you know, health, you know, how do you feel about relationships today and gender wars? You know, because it seems like with the, the women empowerment, it's also a lot of bickering back and forth, yeah. terms, especially on social media. Yeah. I mean, I think that's stupid, to be honest. I mean, I think that I think that there should just be a respect, um, you know what I'm saying, for, hey, the guys, they want to do what they want to do. But the girls, you know, you guys should have be respected the same way and do what y'all want to do. I think that there's a lot of double standards. I've never been a fan of double standards. I think that that's ridiculous, but it is the society that we unfortunately kind of live in. Uh, I think that the arguing back and forth is not really going to help anybody come to any kind of solution. So anybody that I see arguing on the Internet is just kind of like, OK, like, are you kidding me right now? Like what where where are we making true progress so while i do think it's good that some of the conversations are being had i think that also certain things have to be set in place okay what are you guys arguing for what is the purpose what are we getting towards so i'm very very solution oriented i don't even want to argue with people i like to hey okay well how can we fix it so that's not i feel like that's a waste of time we could be getting money that's just me all right so you know with everything that's happening right now and all of the the racial tensions and things of that nature. Black people as a whole, we should be sticking together more Absolutely. Than ever at this point, you know, and how do you feel about the current state of, of America? Yeah, um, the, the police brutality is sickening. That's been something that we have been dealing with since day one. I mean, police is the original slave catcher. So, you know, that, that part really hits home for me. Uh, Especially, you know, going to an HBCU, growing up in Murfreesboro, I really wasn't given, you know, the tools or even the knowledge that I should have known about until I got to Howard, where I learned about the Atlantic slave trade, where I learned about Asada Shakur, where I learned about, you know, just, you know, the how Europe, how Europe undermined Africa, you know. So it really goes deeper. And I feel like in order for us to truly move forward, because I even went to talk to a group of kids yesterday Asked them, do they know the Black National Anthem? Very basic, very basic. No, they don't know. A lot of, you know, things about Black culture or Black, you know, not, they don't know. So I think it's very important that, you know, as older Black people and as, you know, teachers, as family members, it is our responsibility to pass this information down. You know, we always wonder, hey, why don't we know our bloodline? Why don't we know this? Why don't we know that? Because we don't value it we have to keep it sacred we have to you know really appreciate ourselves as a people love ourselves as a people i had to find re-fall in love with black people all over again you know by going to howard and really appreciating the spectrum how different we are how special we are how talented we are so 
you know, the climate these days, like you said, we got to stick together, but we also have to educate ourselves because without true education, there won't be any, any kind of passion to change. You know, one of the quotes was, uh, for a man to be in America and not to be upset or something along the lines of is you, you, you don't know you're, you're ignorant if you're not some kind of upset. So I think that's very, very true. And I don't think that you have to stay upset because you need to use that energy to find a solution or come together in some kind of way. But yeah. Okay. Now me personally, you know, being that I was a military brat, that taught me a lot about our people in general because mm -hmm. I spent some time in Germany and lived mm -hmm. over there for a little mm -hmm. while. I saw a bunch of Africans up there. Yeah. I didn't understand why they were there. Yeah. Um, and then just going back and forth between military life and then coming back home to the neighborhood, you could clearly see the difference. Yeah. Like just sirens, gunshots, you know, things like that you didn't hear systematic. over on that side. Like, absolutely. Systematic. All of it is systematic and um, in order for us to undermine the system, we have to know about the system because, you know, white people like to codify their history. They like to cleanse it. They like to make it right. They like to see some kind of validation, justification in that. But in a lot of, unfortunately, because we're uneducated, a lot of black people are not equipped to even battle that or even mentally process these things. Some people don't even recognize racism because you you, you in denial because you got the white man telling you, oh, no, that's not, eh, eh, eh. no. You need to know for yourself. You have to be educated for yourself to be able to battle. This that's in anything, you know. To say you can't be a lawyer and and not have gone to law school and know nothing about law, how are you gonna do in the courtroom? So it's the same thing with just you know knowing about our history and knowing about what we deserve, what who we come from. We are kings and queens. We are the originals. So it's like if you don't know that, you're not gonna be as confident. If you don't know that, you're not gonna know how to even speak to people about it or maybe not speak to people about it so you know so moving forward you know what do you have planned coming up over the next year or so what type of developments are you working on currently yeah you know so we're just going to continue to push journey to self uh you know add you know some merch to the whole ordeal some workshops things like that uh, you know, I have a couple pop-ups coming up, a couple speech, speeches coming up in uh, D.C., the D.C. area. Um, I have a couple collabs. You know, what I what I do to make most of my money is I do a lot of work with uh, beauty companies, so hair care, skin care, makeup, all of that stuff. Um, I do a lot of health collabs, so, you know, any new great pro probiotics or living foods on the market or anything, I'm gluten-free also, so any kind of gluten-free treats or snacks, I'm always, you know, kind of collaborating and getting partnerships with those kind of people um, and then you know the inspiration sector is just kind of going out showing up speaking to the young kids the young girls college readiness if you want to get in the entertainment industry are you sure uh, and just you know being confident just everything that I kind of cover in the journal so Absolutely. all right so lastly you know how can people find you on social media website yeah, like for sure so my website is www.sirenelevette.com um, that's C-Y-R-E-N-E-L-O-V-E-T-T-E. -E -E. And then my socials are at Cyrene Levette, Instagram, Twitter. I'm not really on Facebook too much, but if you hit me up on IG or Twitter, I'll hit you back. That's at Cyrene Levette, C-Y-R-E-N-E-L-O-V-E-T-T-E. -E. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming through. You know, much success you. to you in the future. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you around. Absolutely. Thank you.